Let's look at another quick quilting motif. This one is the loop the loop. Again, if you've never practiced your free motion quilting, this is such a brilliant pattern to practice. Do it in straight lines, do it from left to right, practice it right to left, top to bottom, bottom to top, even try going around a frame. Draw out your borders, okay, or your frame around your block, or even your block, and practice drawing the motif. If you can draw it, you can quilt it, okay? But if you can't draw it, sitting behind your sewing machine isn't gonna make it any easier. So always start by drawing. So the loop the loop, I've just got some parallel lines. And again, I'm starting on one side and it's doing that loop the loop and making sure that the bottom of your loop the loop, this part here is right near the bottom of your line. Um, if you do that loop the loop and you have the crossing part inconsistent, it looks messy, all right? So just make sure that you have your loop the loop right at the bottom. Experiment with doing small and big, or even try doing it top down. Have wider spaces, or narrower spaces to create different areas of density of quilting on your quilt. And don't forget, whenever you're doing free motion quilting, you need to make sure that your free motion or darning foot is installed on your machine. And you also wanna drop your feed dogs. Don't be alarmed when you put the feed dogs back up that they don't pop up. As soon as you take your first stitch, the feed dogs will come back into play. But right now we've got them dropped, ready for free motion quilting. So in this example, we're going to do loop the loop quilting. So remember when we drew it, we are doing loop the loops from bottom to top and we want our crosses to be as near to that bottom seam as we can get them. We're gonna start at the bottom and we are going to lower our presser foot and drop our needle down, bring our needle back up again, lift the presser foot and then move our quilt forward. There's that bobbin thread. We want both of our threads on the surface when we start to quilt. And then we'll just get back into position, drop the needle back into the quilt. And then we're gonna start by doing a few tiny stitches on the spot or just maybe slightly apart. So we've got some tiny micro stitches to secure our thread. And now we're gonna do that loop the loop. And you saw at the start how I traced my finger over the surface of the quilt in that loop the loop pattern. If you're ever at a point when you're quilting, when you're not sure where the pattern goes next, just stop, trace with your finger, and then I always say that tracing your finger on your quilt leaves sort of invisible markings. Your eyes can still see where your fingers traced. And if you do it straight away, you'll stitch right on those lines. And it's a really good way of just working out where you're gonna go next. So let's start quilting the loop the loop. So again, when you're starting, run your machine quite fast and move your fabric quite slowly. So to start with, let's go really nice and dense, tall, thin, closely spaced loop the loops to create really nice, dense, flat quilting. Now, if we want to, we can change the density and make our loop the loop still tall and thin, but with more of a space in between them. And just doing this by eye, creating a different kind of texture. If we want less dense quilting and a more open look, just open up those loop the loops and make them wider and more generous.
And don't forget, you can also experiment with doing tall and short loop the loops in the same design. And again, you could mark a midway point or you can just do it by eye. and then just a few short stitches to finish off the line of quilting. There's our loop-the-loop -loop quilting, our next quick quilting motif.